Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this lovely Friday for an afternoon of art and inspiration. And I hope you guys get to draw along with me today. And uh, so I think it's going to be super fun. Um, I, a couple things before we get going. You might notice that we have a little bit of a new look in the studio. It's really awesome. We have some new lighting, so I have to give a shout out to Roger Thompson Photography and Todd and Kenny for all your help in setting us up, hooking us up with this gorgeous setup. So that's really, really exciting. It's very easy and um, plug and play for us. We just pop on a couple of lights and we're good to go, which is really, really, really nice. And I have a little bit of inspiration just to share with you guys, waiting for everyone to come on to the stream. And this is actually from Stephen's, Stephen Pressfield's book, um, um, The War of Art. Let me see if I can get my, my it's on my Kindle, and get it going here. Here it is. Okay. I love this book. It's just really inspirational to me. I, um, let's see, here we go. Let me get, let me, oh, I lost my page. I'm going to get to my page here. Here we go. This book kind of makes me cry, actually, because it just, I connect with it so strongly and it resonates with me. So this little passage is, the magic of making a start. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there's one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. That the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would n not otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from that decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man would have dreamed would come his way. I have learned a deep respect for one of Goth's couplets. Whatever you do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, magic, and power in it. Begin it now. So I love that. So, but of course, starting is always the hardest part. And before we begin drawing today, I want to talk a little bit about my drawing workshop, which we have decided to extend the sale on it to the end of this month because we, we lost a few days. I was I was off of work for a few days, so weren't able to address questions and whatnot quite as thoroughly as I would like to have. So we're going to extend the sale to the end of the month. So that's good news for you. I'm really excited to be offering this workshop. It's really the culmination of a couple of years of really hard work and figuring out what exactly I could um, bring to you guys. Um, I think drawing is the foundation of all of what we're doing. So it's there's a lot to it. So it was a little tricky for me to put it all together in a way that I thought was um, really going to complement everything else that we're doing and really allow you guys to re um, tackle any subject matter that you, that, you're, that you can dream of, really. So um, this course is kind of simple. It's really nice. Um, just some pencils, a few, few other things, some paper, and just really all about that really simple observation of drawing and putting, putting down marks, which to me is one of the most wonderful blessings that we have as humans to put, put down a line and, and, and draw. If you're drawing, you can never be bored. <laughs> if you have a sketchbook and a, and a pen or a pencil with you, um, you're, you're never idle, you're never bored. So it, it really, really is amazing and powerful. And drawings can communicate ideas and emotions and set us on a path to creating all kinds of artwork. So th this course is really meant to be a foundation. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, yeah, it took us a long time, Kevin. We actually, we actually did a whole workshop and I threw it threw it out, not really threw it out, but I'm like, no, this isn't it. This isn't the beginning one. 
we need to start from scratch. So we, we, we start it all over again. Uh, so whether you're drawing for a hobby, where you want to record travels in a journal, whether you want to just improve your drawing skills for your painting, this course will help you along that path. Um, and I think that those basic skills to draw three-dimensionally and realistically is not only, not only really fun, but it, even if you don't want to paint, you know, or draw re super realistically, this course is going to help you to be able to identify the basic shapes and come up with strategies to draw anything that you can um, imagine. And we, we start the, with an introduction and orientation for success so you can relax and sink into the pleasure of drawing. Then I cover m materials, which are pretty simple. And then we kick off our study with a lot of warm up and play time. So you can just like just get into the mode of like using the pencils and, and making lines. And then we work on how light falls on form and how to translate that into values. So we're gonna, you know, we do those traditional cube, sphere, cone, all of that, which people kind of, you know, bump up against and like, oh, I don't want to do that, but it's really important to to go through all the steps because I built the workshop, you know, with incremental skills. And then we concentrate a whole bunch on seeing everything as a shape, not a thing. Because in our minds, if we, we start seeing, oh, that's a face or that's a car, then it gets really, really hard to, to draw those things. But if we break things down simply into just shapes, then it, the whole world opens up. We can draw anything if we do that. But it takes some practice to see things like that, just see things like you just dropped from outer space and you're an alien and you don't know what a single thing is. That's kind of the way to go when, when it comes to drawing. And then probably the big meat of the workshop is the construction techniques. I take you through seven different ways of thinking about constructing your drawings. Once you see the basic shape, that's great. You, like, you see everything as a shape, but then you got to be able to put it down on paper and actually construct the thing. So I take you through the steps of these seven different construction techniques. And then after that, you might want to get a little bit deeper and do some rendering, refine your drawings. Not, so it's not just a sketch, but an actual finished drawing. And so I take you through a, a series of rendering techniques and um, little exercises to take you through those. And then we get into the projects. And the projects, we, we delve into nature, we do a still life, and we do an animal. We do a really cool little little dog and an elephant. So there's all kinds of different subject matter. And I think all of that kind of relates to almost anything that you want to draw. Um, so and then I, then I send you off with some, some, some advice and encouragement and inspiration, I hope. Um, as usual, I narrate every single demonstration, and so you see everything that I'm doing. And there's a Facebook group that you can join, and I am so amazed and surprised by what's happening on the, this Facebook group for the drawing workshop. People are really, really um, digging in. As usual, I mean, all the workshops I do, I'm always like, wow, people are really embracing it. But this one, is, it's, it's just there's something special and different about it. And um, you guys are really surprising me. Um, and then we're also for this this workshop, we're going to have some special members only live streams, and you'll have a chance to uh, uh, have your work critiqued. And different from um, our the monthly subscription product, you'll have lifetime access to all the videos once you purchase it. So you can work at your own pace from your own home. It's really, really simple and it's pretty seamless. The, the website's really easy to handle. There's, and, and if, even if it's difficult for you, we have an absolute amazing support team that'll help you with any technical difficulties that you might have in navigating the website, but, it, but it's really pretty simple. And 
yeah, we really pride ourselves in that customer support. So the, I wanted to make the workshop really affordable. Um, so it's on sale right now. Uh, again, till the end of the month, monthly pastel painting lessons online members automatically get their $15 discount at checkout when you're logged in. So it's a super great deal for you guys because that's on top of the uh, sale price, really phenomenal. And I really want you to be able to amp up your painting skills with this workshop and start tackling those subjects that you kind of shy away from. And I know they're those because, <laughs> oh, I can't, I don't have the drawing skill to do that. Well, no more are you, if you get the workshop, this will really, really help you out, get you, get you on the right track. All right. So that, that is it. So now I get to draw this afternoon. I'm really excited about doing this little rose for you guys. Now, the rose is a pretty complex structure, right? If you think about it, um, those, it's that spiral. Let's, let's just look at some construction of before we get going. So if you, if you think about it, it has this kind of shape in the center here. Well, if you think about the overall shape, we think about this, just this overall shape. And then it's got this core that's this little little kind of this kind of thing. And if you think about just a spiral like this, and a spiral is a really cool kind of structure because a spiral, well, first of all, spirals are really, really strong, really, really powerful. And um, that, that's just kind of all it is in, in the center, it's just this spiral. And then the, the petals are, are kind of um, coming away from, from that. Um, the, the petals are folding around that spiral uh, and uh, around one another. And so let's, let's just take a, a look at one of these, these flowers right here. Are you dialing in our lighting? Okay, I so. I realized, Marla, that I, I, we left the house lights on. Oh, yeah, we left the ho house so lights on. it's going to be a little funky. Okay. That's probably better, huh? A little better, yeah. Yeah. It's so nice. That light's so good. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm sorry. Rose, but I want to start pulling these out of here. So if we start pulling these petals out. We can take a look at it, and the, the petals themselves are really, really beautiful. They, they, they sort of do this kind of folding on the edges. So that's something we want to pay attention to as they, as they come along. So take this and we see that that's. So I think it's really important to, to, to do this kind of direct observation. Yeah, we could just draw like a little symbol of this and kind of phone at home, but we want to dig in a little bit deeper than that. We want to really pay attention to the, the nuances, the little crinkles on the edges, all these beautiful things, thinking about the way the light's falling on it, all that good stuff. So. So we just keep going. Let's just keep going and just see see what happens when we keep taking these petals off. Maybe I can use these petals in my bath later, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. See, now, see, it gets to be, as we take these petals off, it gets to be more and more like this. See, and it's just these petals folding around. So that's just a good good way of thinking about it. So see that guy, it's a lot simpler, but we're going to go for the, the, the whole thing with the, from the, from the photo reference. So what I did, oh, this is so pretty, it smells so good. All right. What I did was I started here and I, then from there, I, I thought, okay, I've, I've got this. And from the photograph, I just was carefully drawing these petals fold, folding out of this core and thinking about them going around. And so I did this drawing. Then, well, actually, I'm going to back up a little bit. I started here. I started with these. See this? I'm, I'm just practicing, practicing, getting a feel for it, thinking about those kind of construction methods. So I'm 
I'm, here's, this, here's the overarching shape, and then here's this core shape, and then again, the petals off of that. Now, in the workshop, I really go in depth into these construction methods, how to think about constructing just anything. Okay, so then from there, once I had this, I, I took my tracing paper over the top of it and did another version, come along and redraw. And I did that several times. So here I've got this one. This one's the next generation from the, the beginning thought. And then from there, I had this, then I have this guy. So this is my final version. So I've done several iterations of the initial drawing, restated till I really got a refined drawing that I was happy with. Okay, now here's one key. I am really interested in getting the light on the little rims of these petals because I think that's, if you look at the photograph, that's what really makes this so amazing, the, the, the darks under here and the light rim of the petals. So what I didn't want to do, what are we having troubles? Oh, no. Sounds like we're having, looks like we're having troubles. No, we'll better Okay, all right, so once, um, I just want to make sure that they can see that this really clearly. Okay. Okay, great. So once I have this, this drawing completed, I want to transfer it to my final surface, which is, I'm, today I'm using this Canson paper. But I didn't want to transfer it with graphite. And the reason for that is uh, I want to make sure I can get that light, um, the white charcoal for the little rims of the petals on top on these, on these edges. And the graphite sometimes sort of resists a little bit with that white charcoal. So instead of using graphite to transfer it, you know, like we do, like we take this and we do this and then, and then we transfer it like so. Instead of doing that, I took some white pastel and I put that on the back of the, the I don't know if you can see it here, this, now you can see it. I put that on the back of my final drawing of the rows. So now, here's my transferred version. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it very well. Let's see if it can, because it's really light, because, see, you see, because it's, it's, um, it's that white. But this is gonna make it so it's gonna be super easy for me to get that little white rim on there, which I'm hot to get. All right, so now we get to start in. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave this tracing pad under my piece of paper, and that's just so that it has a little bit of give and it's not right on the surface of the of the the wood table. Let me get these guys out of my way here. Just set these over here. And I'm going to move these guys out of the way and and I, I like to keep my my surface kind of nice and um, organized and clean so that I am less likely to to get my wrist in it or something. Okay, so here's my, is that is that pretty good placement? Is that okay? There, I'll try, I'll try. Okay, so now here's my reference photo and I'm gonna put my hair up so I don't get my hair in the way. And we can start. Now, I've decided today to use a couple of things. I'm gonna use some graphite pencils um, I also, this is graphite as well, but it, my mechanical pencil, I always like this. 
I also may add a little bit of charcoal. Now, sometimes the charcoal and the graphite don't play very well together, um, but I think that I'll be able to make that work today. All right, and then I've got my um, General's Charcoal White, a kneaded eraser, um, electric eraser if I want it, <laughs> and sharpener. I might use some stumps um, at some point to blend a little bit. We'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to start in, and again, I'm, I'm going to put this so I don't smudge my, my um, initial drawing. And it's kind of fun and easy because really I'm just letting the, those little edges of the rose be the star. I've got to bring this a little closer to me because I can't see it. There we go. Now I'm thinking about, so my light source is, it's kind of um, up here and above. So I'm thinking about the cast shadows that are falling on the petals. So I'm just kind of going inside. Um, the cat shadows. At this stage, it's a it's a little bit like coloring because it's not most of the work has been done. Now here's where, right here, there's. A, this is the, the area that I want to be pretty dark. And you see there's quite a difference between the graphite and the charcoal, so I'm going to blend it together. Now looking at the rows, it's, so I'm going to just start to put some of these little edges in with the white charcoal, just so you can see where I'm headed with this. Now see, if I had transferred the drawing with graphite, I'd have this kind of hard edge where those are, and I don't want that. There's another spot where I want it to be dark, right in there. And uh, Marla, just to clarify, mm -hmm. um, you started this one off with a tracing, more or less for this demo, correct? Um, like in the in the drawing workshop, you you'll start from scratch. Oh yeah, well I show you the all the construction methods in the in the drawing workshop, yeah. Pretty in depth. Yeah, it is. Okay. 
gently. Yeah, you have to get the, the workshop to get everything. Yeah, I can't. I, sometimes I just can't do ev the whole thing in a, in a live stream. Now I'm going to come along with this guy. But this is one of the... And the, the cool thing is right here, so that the, the petals, they, they kind of curl under. So you want to kind of try to say something about that. There's a cast shadow here. A cast shadow here. So Bonnie has a question. Mm -hmm. um, when drawing, how do you keep drawing this rose? How do you keep from getting lost with all those petals? That's a really good question because it it is a pretty you know they flowers, not just roses, but a lot of flowers can be really complicated. So what I that's why in, in the drawing I spent a good deal of time. Uh, constructing the drawing and once I have that I stick with that I try not to get lost in the um, the the complexity of it so once I've committed to doing to my drawing that's that's it then I try not to um, get you know too stymied by it because it, it is easy to have that happen. So stick with your plan. going to come Now this drawing is I think pretty accurate to this particular photo reference but it's not exact but it has the um, the qualities of of the rose that I want. Let's see what's this going for eight B here. So here's a little edge. It's a little rounded edge of the rose. Now here I'm going to come and outline that because that, that doesn't have the light outline. And then I'm going to make some marks that suggest the direction And uh, when you get a chance, can you just kind of do a roll call on all the pencils you're using, just to remind yep. you? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And so it gets to be kind of creative, like where where do you um, decide to outline it? Where where are you going to use the the white the the toned paper does a tremendous amount of work in this case. When you finish this drawing, um, will you do the whole thing? Will you put it in the vase, or it's just are you just drawing the rose? No, I'm just doing the rose. It's really, though it's going to be somewhat rendered, it's really a study. I need to put it up and see it a little bit. Okay, that's good. Looks like there's a little question for me, and it is, uh, Kevin, do you paint with pastels also? And the answer is no. I do paint, but not with pastels. I do like them, though. They're great. Yeah, they are. I'm actually, surprisingly enough, been playing with some pastel pencils on some different papers. <clears throat> and um, there is a little discussion here, um, pastel pencils and sharpening can be a little bit of a little tricky sometimes. Oh, I can, oh, I could definitely speak to that because when I was an Working as an illustrator, I did a particular style that was, I used pastel pencils, Carbothello pencils for the most part. And the style that I was doing depended on, you know, the, it was pretty tight. So the pencils had to be sharp. <laughs> so really sharp. So I, found that I, I, I used a, primarily I used an electric sharpener, but the, those electric sharpeners wore out really quickly and they, um, the Carbothello pencils break off in them. So it was really kind of frustrating uh, for me. Um, but I had lots of, you know, that was a little bit pre-internet, but as I, as kind of internet gained ground, I heard, okay, well, if you put the Carbothello pencils in the freezer, it makes them a little bit harder. Well, that doesn't really, really, really work. Um, so to me, really, the best, the best route is a really good, just old school pencil sharpener for them. And, you know, you're going to need some kind of uh, like a, a X-Acto knife because the, the, the lead gets stuck in there and you're going to want to be able to remove it. But really, I, I'm, I'm really sorry to say I can speak to it, but I don't, to this day, have a super good answer to it other than um, patience. <laughs> and do you have a favorite brand of pastel pencil? Oh, yeah, I like the Carbothellos. They're, they're, they're soft which is part of the, you know, is the primary reason they, they break off so easily. Just coming in, getting a little, little idea of an outline in here. 
So this is the fun part to, to kind of get these, these little notches and the little character and how the, this little petal, this little part is softly folding down. And so right here, right here, this where these two lines are intersecting, this is the fold. And a little bit of tone and then coming in with there's a little bit of reflected light right there hitting that really softly. There's a little reflected light hitting here. So we, just even in this petal, we can get, we can say a lot about it and say how it's folding, something about its texture. It's amazing just with a couple little tools you can describe something. And hopefully delicately, because it's delicate. And hopefully beautifully. A little dark in here. And can you remind us what uh, what paper you're using again? This is Canson My Tientus. And I like this paper for for drawing on. I used this paper when I was a little kid to do. I did lots of animals and I used Conti pencils, Conti and Carbothello. Okay, so keeping your pencil sharpened is a good good way to go. A nice. So this this gets a really good point. And that's just that little metal one. The, yeah. The one from Germany. Yeah. Oh, I broke it off because I wasn't gentle enough. There's there's a pencil sharpener that I'm. You and I, Kevin, talked about it. That that one. That looks to be really good. It's like a brass one or something. Brass. Yeah. I'm gonna get one and give it a try. Quite kind of expensive, like 20 bucks or something? Something like that, I'll look it up. There's a few. Yeah. I'm gonna get it. The M&R brass pencil sharpener, nine bucks. Nine bucks? But then there's one called the Hobo, which is 78 bucks. Hmm. So it sounds mm. like a pretty... Yeah, I don't know about that. Pretty fancy product here. It's spelled, um, let's see, H O V E L, Hovel, however you pronounce that. And it's supposed to be the best pencil sharpener ever. Ever. Well, it, <laughs> I, I, I bet. It really is. I bet they're saying it is. Okay. All right, we're looking pretty good here. I'll bet they're saying that. I don't know. There are times when having, you know, super great, the right tool, but I don't know. Maybe we should the just magic buy it, it and make a video about it. We yeah. Do a little unboxing, just a birthday present to yourself. Mm. What if it turns out to be all, you know? What if it turns out to be like, yeah, yeah, it could. It turns out to be the best thing ever. I don't, I don't know. I think the magic is not in the tools, usually. That little...
I get a couple little darks going. This kind of thing is just, to me, just super meditative and relaxing. I want to blend that charcoal. So I don't want the charcoal to pop out too much from the graphite. Look like it doesn't belong. So I'm just going to blend it in a little bit here and there. Oh, Judy says that she has um, a hovel. And? Uh, extra fine, that's what she says. I don't know if that's a brand of hovel, or let's take a look. But, you know, um, it definitely seems like a nice pencil sharpener, that's for sure. Well, maybe we should get one. Give it a try. If we buy it on Amazon, we can return it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little reticent about fancy tools, but we'll see. Just these edges, trying to get these petals to kind of do that little little curling that they do. Let's see. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to get this guy. So during the drawing workshop, we I cover rendering techniques similar to what I've done today, but um, as I said, the, the meat of it is the construction techniques, how to think about building The, your subject and elements in your piece, placing it on the page, getting getting the whole thing on the page. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Now what what do I want to do that's maybe a little different? A couple little, maybe emphasize some of these. I like to use the, and I'll go over the, the pencils that I used. I like this mechanical pencil. I had a question from a student um, about the workshop that I, I usually try to um, can can you turn can you turn your drawing like this <laughs> and yeah you can you should you should you know get it wherever you need it to be to so you can see it uh, when I'm doing the the live streams and the videos for you guys I try not to do that I consciously try not to do that so that you'll see everything. Um, and that it won't be confusing when you when you're watching me. Um, so that's the only reason that I keep it in one place. It's not um, 
It's not because you shouldn't turn it. You should turn it. Oh, I just saw a little opportunity right here to get a little more of an idea of the cast shadow kind of coming in there nice and soft. That's nice. And this maybe wants to be a little bright, brighter so it moves forward. That In that way I'm getting a little more volume. And that's fun. Okay. I think that's it. There, there you have it. I could spend a little bit more time doing softening some little bits. I think it's looking pretty good. Oh, I see a couple things I want to do. Just a little emphasizing some lines. Peggy comments, I wonder if turning a pastel painting would have any advantages. Um, it I think it depends on the subject. Um, you know, this is you know fine fine detail work. So yeah, the, I, I think one you know limitation that that I find when I'm painting in pastel is you know working on the easel. So yeah, there are some times when you just want to like get right up. In, right up in there and on on the easel it's sometimes hard when you're standing or even sitting in an easel it's a little it's a it's a it's different than when you're doing this right so there is that physicality of it um, um, but yeah I mean it, there are times when I, I will bring something off the easel and get in there and and and, and do a little something and come to think of it, talking about doing the, my illustration work using the Carbothello pencils, I did all of that work on the tabletop. I did not. I never worked on um, on an easel until I started painting the landscape and using really soft pastels. And want you know you want the the dust to um, go down into the trap. You want it to be vertical, primarily because you you don't want to be working on a tabletop. You accumulate a whole bunch of dust and, and blow it, or or you know that's not good to get it airborne. So that's the primary reason for working on an easel. Now you could, if you were doing a really detailed pastel or any any kind of drawing. Even this, you saw you you guys saw me turn this up a little bit today. That's because it's right now. We've chosen to film it today flat. We sometimes put it at a little bit of an angle, and that makes it much easier for me to see, particularly with the graphite, because the graphite is has a sheen to it and a glare, so it's hard for me to see it. So, you know, all of it's just a matter of You know, there's there's kind of these ergonomics to what we're doing to think about too. There's no rule that you couldn't do a pastel and put it flat and get right up into it. There's not, nothing nothing wrong with that at all. I want to take a look at this little. Ah, I see something I want to do. Let me get. Just a little bit. There's a little. Okay, yeah, I think that's neat. Oh, I see one little spot as I'm looking at it that the that the charcoal's kind of popping out a little much. Make sure I didn't use a lot of it. Maybe there's one more spot. Okay. 
think it looks pretty good. I want to make sure people can see it with that there's no sheen on it. I think, oh, does it look pretty good on camera? Okay, good. Is it, sh is it shimmering in the... No, until you can see that. It's right in front of this once you tilt it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, yeah, I think it turned out nice. And to me, it's just so relaxing to sit and, and do this kind of study. Now, something like this, I think, would be worthwhile to spend time on if then you were going to take this and you were going to do you were going to do some pastel paintings or some oil paintings of, of roses once you have done this you 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 know it you you feel it and you know I see that in master painters all the time we we don't usually typically see the study that they do that detail studies like Edgar Payne did a whole bunch of these little detail studies of rigging for boats and then he would paint the boats but he wasn't doing this, he wasn't doing every little detail, but he knew it because he had already, he had done, he had done this work. So when he got to painting, he could, he could just suggest that rigging because he knew, he knew it. He, he had, he internalized it. So that's be, beyond just the sheer pleasure of doing this, which is to me really immense. Um, there's there's that other thing of like well, oh you've you've like embodied this you know it then when you go to do it in some other medium or in some other context you're so much more well informed and can uh, have much more mastery over it so I swear I think that huge value in drawing lies for us as as painters and artists no matter what media we're using so yeah. Okay, so the sale is on for till the end of the month. We decided to extend it because we, we lost a few days in there. And so go to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check it out and check out the other stuff that's there too. We, we have all kinds of workshops and, and uh, pastel, watercolor, oil, and acrylic. And now we have the drawing workshop, which, um, yeah, I think you should get. <laughs> Okay, guys. So, um, really I think quick. That's it. Uh, somebody asked oh. earlier, so about oh, the, uh, the pencils. pencils. Oh yeah, let's go over uh, including them. the little clip pen that you use there. The, um, the what? The little pencil. The this one? Yeah. The oh stick. yeah. This is okay. Let's just I'll uh, set the drawing aside here so I don't mess it up. So this is just a really inexpensive bic. Um, we call them clicksters, but it's just a mechanical pencil, and I just buy them in a big big box that come with like they come in like a 20 pack or whatever because Kevin and I go through we like these we like to sketch and do lots of stuff with these so um, we use these a ton and this one happens to be an HB number two so they, they have different you can get them with different leads and you can buy replacement leads too you can but I don't generally I just you know kind of throw them away um, and then I use some um, Derwent graphite Pencils. I used a range from 4B, I think up to 8B. I think I used a 6B and an 8B. Um, I like these pencils. Um, they're they're nice pencils. And then I used a charcoal pencil, just a 4B, and just used that sparingly in there and blended that into the graphite. And then we used a General's white charcoal. Um, and these are fun to use, especially on that toned paper. I think they, they really do a nice job. So you're using that the toned paper as a kind of middle value, These the white charcoal as the light value, and the graphite and the charcoal as the, the, the darks and the, those mid-tones. So that makes it pretty, pretty simple. And then I used a, a blending stump, a number three, could have been any size, and then I did employ the kneaded eraser. These kneaded erasers, okay, this one, I forget where I got it, you guys, but this, it's kind of, see, it's kind of pink, and this, it's kind of smushier and easier to, to mold than the gray ones, and um, I only have this one, and I'll find out um, what this is, but... Um, I like this better than the gray ones. 
Um, so that's that's it. Yeah, and then we just used um, this um, pencil sharpener. And I didn't even use the electric pencil sharpener today, so um, was it? Okay, I hope you had fun. I hope you surprised me with your roses on the Facebook group um, if you're taking the drawing workshop or the, the there's the public um, painting lessons with Marla Facebook group if you're um, if you aren't already on there you can um, go on there and and sign up to join that group it's fun too so all kinds of stuff to play around with and dig into and I hope you have a really great weekend and get a chance to draw or paint or be creative in some way even just get out there and take some photos and I will see you next time all right bye bye